Hi, it's Tom here from FDS, and today we are going to talk about communications equipment for Nerf use. Now, there's been a couple of big games in the last month or two. Um, we've had Battle of Britain, and uh, a big thanks uh, to Mr. Crane, Old Man Nerf, and Jay, and all the other guys who contributed to that, and FDT for the uh, sponsorship of the smoke grenades and uh, other bits and pieces. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, we had some big games. I thought I'd look at basic communications gear that you can use in your games and why you should use it. So you can see we've got a range of stuff. The obvious question is, why do I need to communicate in Nerf? Well, if you are playing in a game with a larger playing field, it doesn't matter how big or small the game is, and your voice will only carry so far. And if you want to keep doing that for more than five minutes, and you are going to need to either strengthen your voice or use lots of hand signals and waving, which does work. And uh, the Britnerf uh, technical manual's got a section on hand communications, so um, our little field manual there. If you are going to use that, obviously other people can see you. Um, and that leaves you still needing to get hold of your friends. And sometimes in a larger game, they can be spread over a very wide area. So with that in mind, we'll go straight into tier one of Nerf comms, which is the phone, represented in this case by a trusty brick. Um, and now obviously a phone has got quite powerful communication tools often, um, but it's limited by the mobile network where I live. The mobile network is not very uh, complete and certainly some of the more remote places or places where there is difficulties like Dartmoor and obviously you required to ring if you run out of credit, if you're on a pay as you go or if you run out of minutes um, on other things uh, or you pound your contract out, obviously your phone can get expensive. So put that to one side for a minute. Now that brings us on to radios. I am not going to go into the high-end digital stuff you can spend a lot of money on radios. Uh, if you're working at a professional level, this is not for you. So if you're a professional communications specialist and you have access to digital radios, then what the hell are you doing looking at this video? Go off and play with your nice shiny stuff. Everything on the board here is available for less than $50 all in per person, some of it considerably less. So we're gonna start with the kind of basic walkie-talkie. Now, um, these were introduced to the world sometime back in the 70s, and I remember being very excited when I found my first pair in Tandy, or if you're in America, Radio Shack, uh, like the ones that are used in um, Back to the Future, and expecting to be able to call my friend on the other side of town by just popping up my aerial. aerial. But actually, they don't work like that. <laughs> There's buildings and things get in the way. So we've got an entry-level walkie-talkie here. Uh, this is a kind of uh, citizen's band. Um, there's different countries have different rules on bandwidth. Check your local laws. Um, all of these are um, compliant with the similar sorts of coding and rules. Um, these are just basic set. These run off of a AAA battery in the back. Uh, you can get rechargeable batteries for some of the smaller ones. Uh, they start from 10 to $20 for a pair, or if you're in the UK, you can get them for about 15 to 20 quid for a pair tops. Uh, much less than that sometimes for some of these. This particular one came as a pair and uh, somebody had put them up with offers and I think my father-in-law got them for the equivalent of about $2. These have got a um, number of channels, volume and uh, modes. Some of them are earpiece compatible, this particular one is. Uh, you need to get the correct earpiece for your model as not all earpieces are compatible. Downsides about these smaller radios, short range, relatively low power, um, require batteries. You might, nobody likes their radio battery running out in the middle of a game and having to replenish them from consumer batteries. However, on the plus side, they are cheap, they're easy, you can carry them around, everybody knows how they work. They require no programming or additional work and you can use them straight out the box. And now we move on to um, a kind of basic squad radios. Now, um, these are Baofang, which are a Chinese make. Um, there are lots of other alternative Chinese makes, but we've chosen the Baofengs because you can get the programming software for them. Um, I must warn everybody that these are illegal in the UK as they come out of the box. You cannot use them in the UK as they come out of the box. The frequencies are set for other countries. And the same, you should check your local laws. That's why the programming cable is important. The programming cable just goes in the side here and connects to the um, radio to a PC. It only is compatible with Windows. And there are loads of videos on YouTube about how to program these for your local regions. If you're in the UK, Britain has a community programming service and you just need to go and put a, a question up on there. Now the advantages about these over this are greater range, better aerial, um, these are um, slightly more powerful and also they've got a standard headset plug. Now they come with this headset which is basically a um, multi-sided in-ear type headphone. You can adjust this height really nice that all moves and it basically that sits into your ear that sits over the back of your ear and then like a uh, mobile phone headset it just kind of comes down with a little clip on push to talk 
and obviously you can place that push to torque somewhere convenient and then the plug goes into the side like that. And that sets you up, you can fit that in a standard radio pouch, Condor one, uh, any of the military surplus radio pouches, that will work. And that gives you, that's what you get in the box usually, and you get a couple of those for under $30. I've seen these for as little as $25 for a pair, sometimes lower if you get offers. You can buy singles, you can get them with the programming software um, and all the bits included, and there are lots of headset designs for these. So now we go on um, to the next tier of headsets, which are uh, a couple of different designs, and those are boom mic headsets. This is an entry level boom mic headset, and basically this works rather like the other one in that uh, it sits with the little earbud in the ear and then there's a boom mic down the side. There are also those kind of operator style ones with the little flexi cable and an in-ear bead. Some of them have a wrist push to talk. Um, it's basically up to personal preference. They're all around the same. They're all under $10 these. And the quality is much of a muchness. Although I like this one has a really big push to talk, which if you've got gloved hands or if you're like me and you've got sausage fingers, it's quite good. And this one's right hand uh, ear only. I am, tend to put mine in my off ear. So my left ear is already damaged, so it doesn't really matter that much if it's going to have a radio in it. That's worth considering is to have um, which side of the ear it's going to go on. These are better because if they move the mic closer to your mouth, it's easier to um, get a clear, coherent transmission. Now we move on to the third tier of headset, the tactical operator styly, and this incorporates a um, full over ear muff. This is a copy of the Peltor system um, used by forces throughout the world. Peltor are a manufacturer of high-end headsets and the genuine Peltor ones are amazing and they cost an absolute fortune. Um, but that will cover your head and uh, you will end up looking a little bit like a movie radio operator. Not everybody likes those. I personally really like these, they're comfortable. I've worn this headset for six hours at a time and uh, it's easy to clean. I considered using a muff on the headset, but you don't really need one. You can clean this part, you can see it's covered in my hair. You can clean this part here really quickly with a baby wipe to make it nice and hygienic. And uh, it's got a more robust boom mic. You do have to watch the screw down here. This allows you to unscrew and swap it, so you can have it on whichever ear you like. Um, you can get a variety of different headbands for these. You can get them in cool colors. Um, and I made this, this whole new elastic system. I just rebuilt mine because I didn't like the one it came with. A lot of the cheaper ones come with a cheaper over the head set. So just bear that in mind if you're going to buy one of those. And then you have a push to talk or PTT. Now you can see the size difference, that's a man size PTT. And this comes with a Velcro and it's also got a clip. The clip's really strong. You've got a crocodile clip on the back and it's got Velcro. You can attach that wherever you like. And then it's got a standard jack attachment here. Um, which means that you can leave the push to talk. What we all do is we leave the push to talk threaded into our rigs, and then you can gently unplug the um, headset unit using the large jack plug. Do not pull the wire, pull the plug, right? That's what this section is for. If you want to break your push to talk and keep buying a new one, pull on that wire. That's the downside about those is that you do have to then run the wiring through your clothing or your rigs, otherwise it can get in the way. So those headsets work with the other two, both these two radios. Now we move on to the top of the line. Um, these are a squad leader radio, or if you're a marshal, a pair of these will run you to about $40, maybe $50, depending on which model you get. This is the UV6R. Uh, the older UV5R is a little bit cheaper. They both use the same basic programming setup. Um, the 6R just has a reputedly slightly better aerial, um, which gives it a slightly longer range, and uh, it's just a slightly slimmer package sideways. You can get the 5R in a variety of colours. There are lots of equivalents of this radio by other manufacturers. I'm using this as an example because it's what I bought, because I'm cheap. And this one has a much larger capacity battery than this one. Um, this is 1800 mAh from start. You can get big high cap batteries for these. You can get a massive high cap 3800 mAh battery for the 5R. Both of these you can get a battery bypass thing which plugs in the back and then has a cigarette lighter plug on the end. Uh, if you take that off and put an XT60 on, you can run it off a 3S LiPo. So if you want to last an entire weekend, um, just plug it into one of those big 3800 mAh LiPos and you will not have a power problem. Now this one, the better version of this over that, why this is better is because it has what we call monitor or dual band capability. And um, it's worth looking for if you're buying a second-hand radio. This, again, requires programming before use. Do not use this in the UK out of the box. You will be committing an offence and you could be um, putting people's lives at risk by transmitting on frequencies which are not open to the general public. Uh, you could create radio interference and if you do that, 
and you can get a visit. So do not use them without getting them reprogrammed. Again, the same programming software works for this one and this one. You have to tear this one right down to the kind of bare software and get it a bit more involved in it. The guy who programmed this for me had a bit of a busy time trying to get it to work, but he said he can do it. So these you can reprogram. Now the advantage about a monitor setup is it's dual band. I'll just turn this on and we'll see if we can show you the screen. Panel mode. So it talks, which is annoying. Obviously it gives your position away if it does that. Now what you've got here is you've got the two frequencies and you can change these. At the moment it's set to channel 8 monitor, which is the top one, and um, transmit on uh, channel 4. And you can move, you can move uh, the channel up and down by unlocking it. Unlock. Five. Four. Lock. And then I can change between the two, so I can change to the, um, I can change to the other one. Unlock. So I've now moved, I've pushed AB, and I'm now changing the top channel. Seven, six, seven, eight. Back to the bottom one, lock it. Lock. So what you can do with that is, I can hear all the chatter on channel eight, but I can't transmit. So I can, I can listen only on channel eight, and I can listen and transmit on channel four. Channel four will cut into channel eight at any time. So if I'm only hearing chatter on channel eight and a priority transmission comes through on four, it will put it over the top of the other channel. Now the beauty of that is if you're a game organizer or a moderator, what you can do is you can have your uh, listen channel set to the player channels, and you can have your uh, transmit channel set to your fellow moderators. So that means if you have a moderator on each team, uh, that mod can listen to that team's chatter. So you can find out if people are being sneaky and metering the game. You don't have to tell them that you can do that, um, but what you do is you standardize the frequencies in use and you say this is there because we only have limited frequencies and to ensure the safety of the event, please stay on the event's specified frequencies. That is the use of dual band and that is why you might want a higher powered radio.